Jim Hutchinson with the Fisherman Magazine here at the Saltwater Fishing Expo in Edison, New Jersey. It's 2022 and guys are out looking to gear up for the offshore grounds this season. It's my pleasure to stand in the Nomad Design booth with an old friend of mine, Darren Doris, Captain Darren Doris. We have to mention old. <laughs> It has been a few years. Long time friend. In the 20 years that I've known Darren, I have known him to catch a lot of fish. He's been a striped bass nut for a long time. He actually had his own fishing show for a while. But the one thing that I do know about Darren in the last few years is he's gone absolutely gonzo over Wahoo. Love him. Why is that? Well, two things. One, they're addictive as all get out. That initial run that they make will take any tackle and test it. And then not only that, they're going to take off 400 lines, 400 yards on that first run. Secondly, my stomach, because they <laughs> taste unbelievable. They are fantastic. But it's a really unique style of fishing. So I wanted to spend a minute or two to kind of get an overview of what goes into Wahoo fishing, what makes it a little bit different tactically, the lures, and your approach to it as opposed to maybe fishing for tuna. No, no worries. So most people catch Wahoo incidentally. You know, they're out there trolling tuna, they've got their Joe shoots, they've got their ballyhoos, they've got their tracker bars, and they end up catching a wahoo or they end up losing the Joe shoot, which is what happens normally. Okay. Their rod tip goes like that, they come back, there's nothing, it looks like somebody surgically cut their leader and they wonder what happened. A lot of guys will tell me, well, I had bluefish. Bluefish don't cut leaders like that, wahoo do. So I've understood that we have them in New Jersey, as far as goes, eight years ago. They're here. It's just how do you begin to focus on catching those. So the other way is to actually target Wahoo in New Jersey. I've been doing it for seven years with a tremendous amount of success. Not only that, but our Wahoo aren't like Key West Wahoo or even uh, North Carolina Wahoo. They're big. Okay. Our average fish is 50 pounds, not 30 pounds like it is in the Keys. So when you switch over and turn into targeting Wahoo, you catch on a consistent, consistent basis. Now we do like to high speed troll, and high speed trolling can be done when you're not tuna fishing. Okay. We all understand the tuna bite. That's why we leave at 1 a.m., 2 a.m. in the morning, so we can be there for the sunrise, the morning bite, and we all know after 10, 30, 11 o'clock, we're pretty much taking the paint off swivels. Right. So that's the time to Wahoo fish. Wahoo live in the first 60 feet of the water column. They rarely go deeper than that. So that means they're always within the strike zone, and they're always willing to strike. Not always willing to eat. Are you, are you finding the wahoo in the same grounds as tuna? Or are you yes. fishing away from you? So it's the same, you'll find in the same water you're finding for tuna. What's interesting though is that wahoo will mix themselves not only with yellowfin, but with bluefin as well. They're eating the same thing. So it's the same concept of food begats predators. You mentioned high speed trolling, and that is going to require not necessarily different rods and reels and outfits and the spread and everything, but it's probably going to require different types of lures. It's going to require some different types of lures. Uh, if you're high speed trolling, you're going to want heavy drails on your long rods. Okay. And it used to be high speed trolling, you'd fish two rods way out and at 10 to 12 knots. But things have changed in the recent history and we've introduced hard baits. Okay. Now this is a DTX minnow. The DTX minnow is designed and auto-tuned to run at 10 knots. Wow. So this allows me now two additional rods in my spread. I can send two on drails way out on my sides and I can drop two DTX minnows right behind that transom back about 75 yards. These are going to run about 50 feet deep, okay. between 40 and 50 feet deep at that 10 knots. Wahoo love them. Same thing, what do we have here? The same. This is not the same as the DTX. Minnow. This is not. The DTX minnow is a big lipped plug. Right. This is a Mad Mac. Wow. Now a Mad Mac is I just a, picked it up and it's heavy. It it's is. so heavy. It is heavy and it's heavy because it needs to stay in the water. It's a lipless crankbait right. on a grander scale. Um, what I've learned with the Mad Max is that you can run these off of your short riggers. Now don't tell anybody. <laughs> But you can run these off your short riggers about four feet deep. Wahoo love them. And when Wahoo don't love them, big eye. Big eye love them. That's awesome. Nomad, I know Nomad Design got started in Australia for big, toothy, monstrous critters. The tackle was not holding up very well. This actually was designed for dog tooth tuna, which is where DT in X oh, comes from. Gotcha. Dog tooth extreme. That's awesome. One quick question as far as setting out for, for Wahoo mentioned it in an article you wrote for the Fisherman Magazine a couple of years ago. Um, just advise somebody, because somebody's going out for tuna fishing, uh, you mentioned something, maybe get to a point where you troll out, finish your day, 
troll back. Tell me a little bit about that. Wahoo doesn't have to, Wahoo fishing, targeting specifically at high speed, targeting Wahoo does not mean you have to stop tuna fishing. It just means that in between tuna fishing, you know, on your way out, let's say you got a late start, or you're tournament fishing and you're not quite where you want to be and you want to keep moving, but you know, time's wasted. And every minute in a tournament means line's gotta be in the water. Slow it down to 10 knots, drop some DTX out there, and you're Wahoo fishing. Then switch it all back out, back out for your tuna spread. And then again, 10.30, 11 o'clock, you switch back to Wahoo, speed it up. Start looking around to see where you wanna hit that afternoon bite. Then bring the Wahoo stuff back in, out goes the tuna stuff again, and that's a day. I mean, there's nobody on a boat that doesn't want to add a wahoo to their catch. Thank you. Period. Fastest fish, I would say, in the Atlantic Ocean? Uh, sailfish is. Is it really? Yeah. Yeah, sailfish is the fastest fish in the world. But they don't taste so good. But they don't taste great, and you got to unhook them and send them back. The wahoo? I've never met somebody who didn't want to put a gaff in a wahoo. That's awesome. Darren Doris, can't thank you enough. Jim, my pleasure, man. Get into the Nomad design and get into that wahoo fishery this summer. Get on it.